y'all it's heel heat time hi everybody and welcome to heel heat my name is george coles and this is our tna show for the week let's jump right into it first off we're going to start with the so-so segments of the week uh basically they weren't bad they weren't good they were pretty much forgettable well we only had one segment i felt that fell in this category and that was the uh dixie carter bully ray and bobby Roode segment for Dixie Carter being off of TV just a few weeks after losing control of the company, it didn't make sense for her to come back this early. Um, the feud doesn't need her. You got two of the better guys in TNA. They could build their own feud. I mean, to me it was just unnecessary. And Dixie's such a bad talker, I almost put this in the bad section because she's horrible at it. Um, but it got saved a little bit with the interactions of Bully Ray and Bobby Roode, which are always good. Next up, the bad portions of the show. And this one really pains me, because this is a feud and an angle that I've rather enjoyed. Um, but this week, it was very, very kitsch, very... Uh, Corny, I guess you could say, would be the right word, and I don't mean Jim Cornette. Uh, we had Christy Hemme coming out to prove her commitment to Samuel Shaw. Samuel Shaw comes out, she flirts around with him, tells him to close his eyes, which brings out Mr. Anderson, who hits him on a mic check, tries to take him and put him in a put him in an institutional van or whatever the hell it said. Just a little bit corny in my life, for my liking. I, I enjoy this feud. I enjoy what it's doing for both Anderson and, and Shaw. I, I think they're good working together. Uh, Shaw is a breath of fresh air on the TNA show. Something totally original, something that we've never seen before. Um, but I just, uh, I don't know. Um, to me, it just... I, this... This segment, other, the other stuff they've done together, I thought's been really good. This segment, not so much. Now, coming off of that, we're going to go into our question of the week. Question of the week last week was, when did you start res watching wrestling, or watching TNA, and why? First answers from our friends, uh, Zombies40. For me, I started watching back in... Impact back in 2006. Samoa Joe, AJ Styles, Daniels were the reasons I started watching TNA. I thought they were awesome. Agreed. I believe that was the year that they did the three-way feud between the two, which was probably one of the highlights of the whole history of TNA. So great, great era to come in on. Uh, next is from our friend Silver84. I started watching TNA in 2009 because of the knockout and tag team. The matches Beer Money and, and Motor City Machine Guns were had were amazing, and the knockout division I thought had such a variety of characters and wrestlers in it. Very great point. So, at one point, their knockout division was better than anything in America. Um, their tag team division was better, was the best out of any major company going all the way back probably till the 80s in Jim Crockett promotions or the early 90s with WCW which was a carryover from Jim Crockett. Um, I started watching from the beginning. I was there on the first pay-per-view and uh, the reason I did is because the guys that I liked that didn't come over to WWE in the WCW merger or buyout I mean were there. I mean, you had your Jeff Jarrett, you had Scott Hall, you, know, you had the younger talent like AJ Styles and James Storm who were just starting to get on the WCW television just before the buyout. And it, it gave a different thing. And 
it was really the very the beginnings the uh, month weekly pay-per-views of TNA era were really just a kind of the hit and miss thing but you could tell that they were going on the right path the stuff that was good was really good like the X Division tag team like the Americans Most Wanted AJ Styles low key um, Christopher Daniels I mean they the they had a lot of stuff there. They had a lot of the pieces that would make TNA what eventually became. And you could see it really early. It was just a very raw product. And as they worked it out and got better and better and polished it, it came to be in about, I would agree, about 2006, 2007 was the pinnacle of TNA. It's been better recently and in I'm going to continue watching it because, to be perfectly honest with you guys, I watch any wrestling that comes on. Um, if it comes on my DirecTV box and I either watch it or I DVR it and watch it later, um, whether it be I get a, there's a show called Prime Wrestling out of Ohio that I watch, um, there was a, a TCW traditional championship wrestling that they were running for a little bit. I think on I, Mav TV, I don't even know what the name of the channel was. Uh, the TNA stuff, the Ring of Honor stuff, the WWE stuff. I'm a, I'm a wrestling junkie, so any way I could get my fix, I get my fix. I just wanted to see what other people, what brought you in, why did you start watching this product. But there's some good answers there and some good, good points. I mean... At its best, TNA is a, a great alternative for WWE. At its worst, it's a pale imitation of WWE. Now, coming off of that, we're going to go into our question of the week for this week. And that's, which TNA wrestler needs to be repackaged? We all have seen it. They do it tons and tons of times, whether it's a heel turn, a face turn, or just a character change altogether. Let us know who you think. Hit us up on our Facebook. Hit us up on Twitter. Put it down where? Down there in the comments. Right down there, that little box. Now we're going to go into the good portion of the night. The first thing I, I rather enjoyed was the Gauntlet Battle Royal, which had James Storm, Gunner, Bobby Roode, Bully Ray, Ethan Carter III, Bobby Lashley, Abyss, Eric Young, Sonata, and Willow all vying out for to be the number one contender for the pay-per-view for the World Heavyweight Championship. And a surprise win, Eric Young picks up the win. Now, they've building him up recently as a credible guy. Um, I, a, few, a few weeks ago, he beat Samoa Joe, or actually Samoa Joe beat him, but you can see where, and the, the announcers even pointed it out, that Joe's shoulders were pinned during the the uh, rear naked choke, so technically Eric Young could have picked up that wing as, win as well. I liked what they've been doing with him. Uh, Eric Young's a guy I've always been a fan of. Uh, I, it's going to be hard for them to pull the comedy gimmick that they've run with with him off of him. But I think if there's anybody that can do it, it's him. He's got the in-ring ability. He's got the connectability with the crowd. And I think he could be a guy that like I said with the repackage a minute ago, a more serious repackaging of Eric Young could be could be a moneymaker, a severe moneymaker for the company. Now coming off of that, we had Eric Young calling out MVP and saying, I don't want to wait to the pay-per-view. I'm on a roll. I want to do it tonight. MVP agrees, gives him the match. Him versus Magnus. If Magnus gets disqualified or counted out, he loses a title. If anybody interferes on Magnus's behalf, he also loses a title. So basically all of Magnus's advantages that we've seen him use to keep the world title are now gone. Then we go into our Divas title match. We had ODB versus Gail Kim versus Brittany versus Angelina Love. Angelina picks up the, the win with her in a Velvet do a little bit of cheating. It is what it is. You got to build Angelina back up to be a serious contender for the 
for the title, and obviously that's what this four-way was for. It was a one, number one contenders match for Madison Reigns' title, which is going to set up a better feud anyway than any of these other girls, in my opinion. As much as I like wrestlers like ODB, Gail Kim, and I'm liking what I'm seeing from Brittany so far, the feud is Angelina Love and Madison Reign. It makes more sense. It has more historical significance. Now, coming off of that, we have a tag title match. The American Wolves versus DJ Z, Zima Ion, substituting for Robbie E, who missed his flight, and Jesse. The match ends with a DQ when Robbie E comes out and interferes in the match. Shocked and surprised that Robbie's there. I like what they're doing with these guys. I, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised at how much I'm enjoying the bromance and their whole gimmick and their angle. Uh, the American Wolves, they're, or just the Wolves now, I'm sorry. I keep, sorry about that, guys. I keep wanting to call them the American Wolves. Um, solid team, solid wrestlers. I thought Davey Richards is choice in the blonde mohawk was a little bit weird. It kind of reminded me of Techno Team 2000. That's a shout out to Laura Lyons who was a big Techno Team fan. Um, but yeah, it was just a weird strange thing. But anyway, the Wolves pick up the win. They're the more serious of the two tag teams. I imagine at some point the Wolves will get the tag titles back. Um, but I do like what the Bromans and DJ Zima Ion are doing as a unit and even just as a team. I think it's kind of cool. Coming off of that, we have our main event, the World Heavyweight Championship match. Eric Young versus Magnus. Now, I'm going to talk about the match a bit. But I'm going to talk about what we've been reading on the internet since this happened and all your dirt sheets and your message boards and whatever you may go to. Everybody's comparing the Eric Young winning as TNA trying to replicate Daniel Bryan winning the World Heavyweight title. I see it as a total different animal. Of course you got some similarities with size, build, and facial hair. That's obvious. However, I think TNA, this was more of a, the way that Magnus has been booked, and I thought he was someone that could make a good future world champion long before they decided to give him the title belt. However, they booked him really poorly, where he's constantly needing outside interference to win or to retain his title, which has made his title run very weak. The fans aren't buying into it. Someone the fans do buy into is Eric Young. Now we have a live television show. We have Eric Young versus Magnus. You got a guy the fans aren't buying into to one of the fans' absolute favorites. A guy like Samoa Joe, unfortunately, wasn't there that night. Or else I think they might have went to Samoa Joe. I think they did this for a number of reasons. A, the shock factor. B, Eric Young has been there since the beginning and he has put in the work deserving to get a shot, at least, even if it's just a transitional to go from Magnus to another heel that stays on Eric Young for a month, two weeks. He deserves that to, you know, due to his longtime services. I don't think it has anything to do with Daniel Bryan, and if it does, it's a very minor to do with Daniel Bryan. I don't think they're watching WWE going, oh, what can we copy from them to make us successful? I think they had this planned out. I think Magnus is floundering as champion. I think they're going to bring, they're going to work on his character more before they bring him back up to that level again. But all in all, it was a solid match. Eric Young pulls out the win, the ultimate underdog. The fans go away happy. You close the show with a, with one of the guys that deserves it most in TNA, picking up a solid win. Now we're going to go right into our ratings for the week. Uh, now if you've watched the show before, you know we have a 1 to 5 scale. 1 being the worst, 5 being the best. 1's a Garrett Bischoff, 2's a Jesse Goddard, three's a James Storm, 4's a Christopher Daniels, 5's a Bobby Roode. I'm giving the show a solid 5 of Bobby Roode. Um, not much I didn't like on the show. 
Matter of fact, you I've seen it before, and you'll see it again. I'm actually going to go above the five. Sometimes the show is so good that my rating system or our rating system just doesn't say how good it actually was. In those cases, we go above our scale. We don't give it a number. We give it an HBK, a Shawn Michaels. Just historically good. This is one of the better TNA Impact shows I've ever seen. I, I thoroughly enjoyed almost everything on the show. I thought it was set up very well. I thought the surprise win with Eric Young was awesome. I thought the setup match with the the Divas or Knockouts division, I'm sorry, um, was great. I think the continuing feud with the Wolves and uh, the Bromans and DJ Zima Ion, that's going to be awesome. I, I like pretty much everything I've seen on the show, and it left me going away from the show a very happy watcher and a very happy fan that I got to see a great TNA episode. But basically, that's all I have to say about that. My name is George Coles, and this has been another episode of Heel Heat.